shring ka e i la ring asa ka la ring sa ka la ring sa hoin kling ring shring namaste <laughs> so today we're going to cover the next bija after ring oh i should mention that ring is the most frequently used a mula mantra or a bija syllable in the Mahasodhi Sakshara mantra. It's mentioned six times. And the other one that's, the nearest one is Shring, which is mentioned four times. And then I think Sa three times and so on. So that's why we did it first. And then we're going to do Kling because Kling is known as Kama Bija. Kama means desire. And this bija, the function of this bija is to, is to attract the divine energy uh, in the mood of conjugal enjoyment. So for example, the kama, uh, the kama bija mantra, there's a kama gayatri mantra, begins with kling. Uh, kling is the, uh, the energy of ecstatic conjugal transcendental love or erotic love in the, between the devotee and the Lord. So this is the power of attraction. And it's not, in this case, it doesn't mean lust exactly, but it means the desire for transcendental bliss. Now, of course, this is our real nature. And the only reason we don't feel bliss all the time is because it's covered over by the lower bodies. Uh -huh. But the Ananda Maya Kosha is the highest body, and this is nothing but bliss. Pure, unconditioned, non-dual awareness. So this Kama Bija invokes that, that uh, our real nature. So this Kama, this desire for bliss is one of the four purusharthas. Purusha means human being, and artha means an asset or an opulence. So the four purusharthas are dharma, religion, artha, economic development, kama, this desire for bliss, and moksha, liberation. These are the four most desirable things in life. And if someone can obtain all these four things, their life is perfect. Uh, attaining the Lord or attaining the goddess, this is the realization of that bliss. That one has a direct personal relationship with God in a certain mood, a particular taste, which is called rasa. And I did some videos on Rasa Tattva, but I never completed the series because I didn't think anybody was really taking it much attention. Uh, but Rasa Tattva is also the root of all of the expressive arts. Music, dance, theater, and all the subsidiary supporting arts like costume design, set design, and so on and so forth that, uh, oh, even literature, yeah? So rasa is the key to art. And uh, we just started another series on music that I hope we can evolve gradually towards a uh, tutorial on rasa, because rasa is very important. So cling attracts the Lord in whatever form that we are most devoted to, whether male or female or whatever mood. Uh, the four, uh, five main moods are neutrality, servitorship, friendship, parenthood, and conjugal love. So whatever mood we are attracted to, and whatever form of God we're attracted to, this clean bija attracts that form. It completes the process of the desire to attain the Godhead. And it increases the level of devotion. So 
Kling has three letters or three symbols combined. Ka, La, and Am. And of course the, the Bindu, Ing. Ka refers to the desire to achieve the grace of the goddess, who alone can award bhakti. La refers to contentment in one's life, which reduces our desires and attachments, and Am gives happiness and joy. In South Indian language, uh, the word Amma means yes, and the word Ama means mother. And both, of course, are based on the letter Am. And this is the bija that through which uh, Shiva shows his love for the goddess. So, you see, ultimately the aim of sadhana is to realize Shivoham, I am Shiva. I am that unconditioned, objectless, non-dual awareness. And when we draw close to this realization, we automatically attract the goddess, the goddess within, as kundalini. And when we realize that state, kundalini will rise spontaneously. There are people teaching so-called kundalini yoga. It's completely bogus. There's nothing that we can do to make kundalini rise. Huh? Uh, did you ever, like, how can I explain it? Did you ever try to make an animal do something and the animal didn't want to do it? <laughs> There's just no way. Huh? It's just not going to happen. The animal has its own individuality, its own will. But similarly, the kundalini is a living being. It's the goddess. It's the life energy. It is what supports your body, what makes your organs run. Huh? Does anybody know how to do digestion or make their heart beat? No. This is happening by the laws of nature. And then nature is the goddess, and goddess is kundalini. So similarly, there's nothing we can do to make the kundalini rise. And to think that we can is just fatuous egotism. Okay? It's ignorance. And so the people who are teaching, like from the yoga platform, kundalini yoga, they are trying to be the doer. And the whole point is that kundalini will not rise until there is no doer, until there is no ego until there is only a big open space full of love and consciousness. And then she comes spontaneously. So next is Ain. After Kling, in the mantra, comes Ain, which is known as Vagbhava Bija. It's the Bija of Saraswati, the goddess of learning. So Ain bestows transcendental wisdom. This is not just knowledge. You know, there's a, a group of people who think that simply knowing these things is the same as realizing them, but it's not. <laughs> we can only know about consciousness because consciousness itself is indescribable. It's ineffable. It's transcendental. But we can experience it. We can realize it. And then we can go back and look at the scriptures and see these descriptions and go, ah, that happened to me. So don't get the cart before the horse. Knowledge is necessary, but not sufficient for enlightenment. One has to do the sadhana. So by chanting this ayin, uh, it has two parts, ai and ng. And of course, the bindu, ing. Here, the bindu, ing, acts as dispeller of sorrows. Because if one has knowledge, then one's sorrows are dispelled automatically. So we know, for example, that the suffering of material life is only temporary. It's not always going to be this way. And there is a way out, and that's given in the scriptures. And that's another aspect of knowledge. Saraswati is the keeper of Sanskrit language and music. So all these arts are 
really in her domain. And she is one of the three primary forms of the goddess, Saraswati, Durga, and Ambal. So by chanting this bija, Ayin, one attains the highest spiritual knowledge that gives buddhi. Buddhi is more than just intelligence, it's also the willpower and the determination to do the sadhana and get the result. So it directly takes you to your chosen deity by elevation of knowledge. And the last one we'll look at today is Ing. Ing. Ing is hidden within the bijas that we've covered so far. Aum, Shring, Hring, Kling, and Ain. Huh? Each one has Ing hidden within it. And so Ing is called the Kamakala. Kamakala is explained as the innermost triangles of the Sri Chakra. We talked about Sri Chakra extensively in the series on the, uh, the goddess, which we did, what was it, the Tripura Rahasya. Uh, we did about a year ago. Anyway, the dot in the center represents Mahakameshwara, Mahakameshwari, Shiva and Ambal in union, okay? That means no duality, non-duality. Huh? Shiva and Shakti are one. There's no difference. Two faces of the same reality, the same unconditioned consciousness. So this ing is actually very important and is the, um, how to say, the, uh, the energy or the engine behind the effects of all the other bijas. That's another reason why we have to be very uh, cautious to observe the nasal termination of all these mantras. Okay, because the, uh, the mood of this bindu is the union of Shiva and Shakti, and this is the aim of all self-realization. So the creation takes place from the Bindu because of their union. Mahakameshwara, Mahakameshwari. So they are the controllers of Kama, of desire. And when they attain their union, then the universe is born from that. Ganesh, Ganapati. We just had the Ganapati Chaturdashi here. Uh, the other night, and there were big processions, fireworks, all kinds of feasts and everything, you know. I missed it because I was tired. I had to go to bed early that night. But uh, every, every year it happens this time. So the innermost triangle of the Sri Chakra, the three sides represent Prakash, the light of Shiva, the directly perceived Godhead, Vimarsh, the diffusion of that light, which is done by Shakti. And the third side of the triangle represents, I am this, tattvamasi, huh? as given in Vedas with Upanishads. So because of this kamakala, these bijas, all of the other bijas in the mantra become capable of creating. And of course we went through the process of becoming, paticca samupada. And the way that one creates is to form sankhara, right? Sankhara is an impetus or uh, an intention. So the intention which is formed by chanting all these bijas that end with ing is that of creation. So what are we creating? Well, in the case of Aum, we're creating the, the, the triple universe, uh, the cause, the effect, and their relationship. And in the case of Shring, we're invoking the goddess of fortune. In Hring, which is, like I said, the most commonly, uh, the, the most frequently used bija in the mantra, 
In Hring, we are bringing into being the path, the way for us to attain enlightenment. Hring, uh, shring, hring, cling is the mood of enjoyment. And finally, uh, cling, hring, uh, ing, shring, cling, ein is the transcendental knowledge that gives us the ability to comprehend all these astute subjects. So, in the next one, we'll, we'll go through Sauhu, and that will be the end of the first line of the mantra. Aum Tatsa Buddhusarnai.